There we go. Good morning, everyone. What a blessing it is to see each and every one here today. And so grateful and so thankful for the opportunity we have to gather together to be in the Lord's house, to give praise and honor to Him. It's great seeing everyone here today. Um, I want to give just a few announcements real quick. I encourage everybody to please read their bulletins. Um, and I uh, also wanted to give a quick update. Men, um, I know I mentioned this last week. Uh, we had ladies have two uh, different events they had a great deal of fun with and a great time with. And I've been working on things. I've secured some uh, aspects of that. I'm looking at a, a special speaker, so Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. Um, that'll continue on, but I'm uh, looking forward to a time where we all can get together. Um, also, I want to um, let everybody know that uh, following the service today, you. Um, the Hillsborough Community Church, because we're having trunk or treat, they're going to do their service a little earlier uh, today. So you might see a car, you might see somebody you, you don't know. You can always introduce yourself, say welcome. Um, but they're going to be here, and then immediately following all of that, at 3 o'clock today, we're going to be doing trunk or treat. Um, we're going to be ministering, and uh, I've got a uh, way to register people, um, got a way to invite people, and uh, this is going to be a great opportunity. Our goal is, um, as we're working with Hillsborough Community Church, to have uh, Mars Hill people, then Hillsborough Community Church people, and then Mars Hill people we can disperse between uh, twins so we can talk and have a good time with those that are here and get to know them, but also to have the opportunity to minister to those that are coming. We've got two jobs. Number one is we want to welcome whoever it is that comes here to Mars Hill. Welcome, make them feel welcome. But number two is also to invite them, to know that uh, we're here. And Sunday morning, we'd love to see them. Wednesday nights, we'd love to have their kids part of the uh, children's Christmas play. Uh, somebody is interested in singing. We have a choir that would love to um, engage them in, in that. So this is that opportunity, this is that chance. So um, look forward to that. It'll be uh, 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock, just two hours, um, to be able to interact and, and invite and um, just minister in our community. Um, also, in your bulletins, there's a thing about the casual dates. Those, uh, those uh, parents that have children that would be interested in going to casual this year, um, those uh, get anything for the summer, um, those dates are quickly um, going to get snatched up um, as they try to plan them at the very beginning of the year. So get that information to Danny or Tracy, and um, that way we can better adjust. Uh, this Wednesday night, uh, our Wednesday night meal will be pizza, so uh, come on down, and uh, there are sign-up sheets in the back for that. Um, also, there are still two dates open um, for anybody that might want to provide a meal. Um, one of those is November 9th. And then we have one also in December, so please keep that in mind. Um, children's Christmas play, Wednesday night, 7 to 8. Um, that is available, and so if you have uh, friends, kids, uh, anything like that, that will be going on. Um, also, Wednesday night, we have a cantata practice going on. Um, that is going to be right at uh, from about 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock. And uh, with the cantata being there, um, we've got a great cantata. It's beautiful. Anybody that would like to be a part of that, is more than welcome. Um, uh, Operation Christmas Child, we're still receiving things for shoe boxes. Uh, so grateful for all of the outpouring there. Um, and then also for the association, we have Senior Lunch and Learn um, that's coming up this week if you are interested. And then also the North Carolina Baptist Aging Ministry is selling uh, wreaths this year to help those that are in need. Um, so there, that is also available as well. Um, with that said, is there any other announcement, anything else that I have missed um, that is coming up here soon? Yes, I see that hand. Okay, as we announced at the business meeting last week that we would have the proposed budget today to hand out, 
I have those. I will be in the back of the church after service. Make sure you get your copy of the proposed budget. We can't talk about it this week, of course, so it has to be in your hand to look at. But if you have any questions, our names are on the back. You can ask us. But at the November business meeting, we will discuss the budget and um, vote on it. So thank you. Make sure That's you available, and Diane will, will be in the back for that. So don't forget to grab hold of that. Anything else? Well, as we enter into our time of worship, I'm going to call Linda Lloyd to come to deliver our invocation this morning. Right. Dear Lord, we come this morning thanking you for the privilege we have to be in your house today. We thank you that we have the freedom in our country to gather together, to study your word, to, to fellowship with one another, to support each other, to help each other grow in a Christ-like manner. We pray for our country, Lord. We pray for the election that's coming up. We ask that you be with us and, and help us to wisely vote and to choose the candidates that would be pleasing to you. Um, it is so important, Lord. Our country seems so divided. There's so many things going on. And yet we know that you're still in control. And we trust that you will lead us in the things that we do and say. Be with us as we go out. and. We talked about it in our Sunday school class to study your word. Help us as we diligently study your word so that we recognize the false prophets out there so that we don't become one that's spreading false things also, Lord. And that we not only lead by what we're saying, but with our actions. Help us to live a life that is pleasing to you, that others can recognize you in us. Be with us, Lord, in everything we do and say. These things I ask in Christ's name. This morning, uh, if you would give your attention to uh, the screen or look into your bulletins if we have our responsive reading. Our responsive reading today is from Romans 3, verses 23 through 26. This is from the New Living Translation, and um, uh, I thought it had just a wonderful message for us about God's amazing grace that comes and changes our life. So let's stand as we read the Word of God together today. The Word of God says, For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God, in His grace, freely makes us right in His sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when He freed us from the penalty of our sins. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past. For he was looking ahead and including them in what he would do in this present time. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness. For he himself is fair and just, and he makes sinners right in the sight when they believe in Jesus. This morning, let's sing hymn number 338, Wonderful Grace of Jesus, all three verses, this great hymn of the faith that proclaims that the wonderful grace of Jesus changes us. It is what God's gift is to us, and it sets us free. Let's sing them to the Lord this morning. Let the mountain 
Amen. Everybody go grab the breath now. Deep breath in. Don't want to have anybody pass it out. Praise the Lord for the opportunity to worship Him today. This morning, in our prayers, we've got a whole mess of uh, individuals we can lift up in our prayers today. Many that are sick and upon the bed of affliction. Uh, many that are just need of, of prayer. I ask that you continue um, to remember Catherine Cheek in your prayer. She is at home. Um, the uh, doctors have put a heart monitor on her, and um, they're looking at all the data. Will be in the in the coming days ahead. Just kind of deciding um, the direction to go uh, next. So um, please continue to remember her in your prayers. Um, also, if you will um, remember my dad, Mike Gregory, uh, got a text message on. Um, Saturday morning. I had to make sure I got my days right. Uh, Saturday morning, he said, Hey, just let you know, I spent the night in the ER. Um, he's like, I'm out. He was getting breakfast that morning. He's, um, he says, Doing okay. Um, it, he's going to go see uh, his cardiologist this week. So I don't know if there's anything going on with his heart, but if you would remember him in your prayers. Um, also, if you will, continue, please, to remember David Carter in your prayers. Um, dealing with some, uh, some big health issues. Um, we'll be going to the doctor on Wednesday, and um, they'll be planning some things. Um, please pray that the, the doctors will, will be wise and do the right things. Um, but also that the Lord would bring his hand upon it um, to give healing. Uh, I know that God is able, He is strong, and uh, anything that He wills can be done. So please lift up David as well as all the family um, in, in your prayers that God's grace would just be poured out um, upon them. Um, also, uh, please, if you will, remember Bob Wilson in your prayers. Um, went by uh, Compass Healthcare and was going to go run in and see him, and lo and behold, they had a big sign out front that they have had COVID outbreak there. So visiting is highly discouraged at the moment. Um, so if you will remember him, as well as the many people that are there, because if visits are not happening, I know that can have a, a huge effect on, um, on uh, everybody's mental health. So please remember um, Bob in your prayers there. Um, continue, if you will, to remember Kathy Pennell. She is at home. Um, she uh, sent me a message and said, hey, I'm home, they discharged me, and I'm exhausted. Um, she's been there a good while, um, been in a hospital a good amount. Um, so if you will, please um, please remember her that she would um, uh, be able to recover and, and do well there. And uh, as has already been mentioned this morning, continue to remember our election. Um, as so many things are happening in our country, um, we have people on the ballot that will go all the way to Washington. We have those that will um, affect our local decisions here. Um, so my encouragement is uh, go and vote early. We did this week, and um, it was uh, very, very easy, in and out, no problem. Um, but please lift up all of those elected officials in our nation um, as, we, uh, as we go forward. Um, also, this morning, uh, I received uh, um, some additional prayer requests. Please remember Norky and Wanda in your prayers. Um, also, John Kristoff, uh, Helen Mokas, and also the family of Doug Bledsoe um, in his passing of the, about the 15th or the 17th of this month. Um, please lift up that family in your prayers uh, today. Um, this morning, as we go to the Lord, who else can we remember today? I apologize. I can't see your hand at first. That's bad eyes. Um, well, let's go before the Lord, remembering these that have been mentioned as well as those upon our hearts. Father, we come before you right now to give you thanks and praise. Lord, what a wonderful opportunity and chance we have to be together this morning. And Lord, I pray now that you guide and direct us. Um, help us today to worship you in spirit and in truth. I pray that today would be a day in which we would experience change, 
in which we would be visited by your Holy Spirit, in which we would be lifted into your presence. Lord, we know you've got a word for us. We know you've got a challenge on our life, and, and right now that's what we're praying for. We pray that you would, would touch us and you guide us and you direct us. Father, um, as, we, as we come before you, we've got these many requests um, upon us for, for traveling mercies, for, um, for sickness, for surgery, for those that are battling um, different things right now. Lord, we lift them all into your hands, and we pray that a great and mighty work would be done. Lord, that we would see your hand at work. We pray that you would help us as a church. Lord, let us be one for you, and Lord, let us minister in your name that it might make an impact within our community. As you give us opportunity, as you give us chances to talk, to interact, and to, to invite us. Lord, help us to be used by your hand to do great and wonderful things. Lord, be with us now as we continue to minister in your name. Lord, I pray that you would work through us, work through this service, for it's in Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. This time we call the children forth for a children's sermon. I get to talk a little bit about one of my passions in life today. So um, we, we get to have some fun. Y'all know what one of my passions is, and that is cooking. I love to cook, not to be mistaken with being a good cook. I just, I like cooking. So, um, on, the, on the screen there, it's, it's probably two of the weirdest things I've ever put up on a children's sermon. Um, now, we're, we're in fall right now, right? And um, have y'all like pumpkin spice stuff? You like pumpkin spice? It's, it's that time, like, we have everything. There's, there's pumpkin spice, like paper towels now. And, um, they, they've got all those things. Well, lo and behold, I was, um, I was on the internet, and I found a recipe. And the recipe is, is amazingly easy. Um, it is something called pumpkin quickies, which basically are pumpkin spice cookies. And I haven't tried it yet. I wanted to, but I got sidetracked last night, so I wasn't able to. But lo and behold, the ingredients are one box of Duncan Hines spice cake mix. So um, that's one. And then, of course, the other one, because it's pumpkin spice, is you get a jar. I, I was only able to get the big jar of uh, pumpkin spice. I wouldn't able to get the regular size one. Just use the regular size one. And basically all you do is mix these two things together and you'll get a dough and then you'll scoop them out and you bake them I think for 12 minutes at 350. And lo and behold, you will have pumpkin spice cookies. Um, that's, that sounds like a pretty easy recipe, doesn't it? Plus one, plus one. And that sounds like, you know, something uh, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to trying that. I have no idea how they taste, but they seem to be pretty, pretty good. I mean, it's pumpkin and it's spice cake, so you can't, can't go wrong too much there. All right, why do I say all that? I just gave you a recipe, right? And in giving you a recipe, those were kind of directions that if you want to have cookies, this is what you did. That's, that's all the recipe, and it says, hey, take Take all of this stuff, mix it this way, bake it this way, and you'll come up with a chocolate cake or a pound cake or an egg food cake or chocolate chip cookies or, you know, beef wellington or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. I know I'm getting everybody hungry, I'm sorry. <laughs> but that's the idea of the story. Now here's, here's the thing. So I just gave it to you, and, you know, I'll probably repeat it four or five more times, you probably memorize it. But it's knowable, isn't it? You know, I can write all that down, and you go, oh, this is, this is how you do it. What I want you to realize is the will of God is just like a recipe. It's something we can know. It's something we can do. And there's wonderful outcomes from it. See, a lot of times people believe, oh, the, the will of God, I, I'll never figure out what it is. No, no. The Bible is full of places that talk about the will of God. Watch this. Look it up. Uh, well, okay, I can look at that screen. You can look at this screen. John uh, 6, verse 40. For this is the will of my Father, Jesus is speaking, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in Him should have eternal life, and 
and I will raise him up on the last day. Jesus is saying part of the will of God is that we know Jesus. Look at, look at this verse. Um, for this is the will of God, 1 Peter 2, verse 15, that by doing good we shall put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. That we speak the truth. That other people would know things about God. Look at this one. I promise there's only three. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, there's only two. Sorry. But we know this. That God has given us his will that we might know it. That we might do it. So as you go through the life, my encouragement is, you can tell other people this. Parents, you can tell your children this. But one of the things I want us to all recognize and grasp hold of is that God's will has been made known to us. And we can do it. And on the other side of it, as we follow Him, are amazing and wonderful results. Now, I, I actually had the plan of actually having cookies available, but I didn't have cookies. So, but I did have something because y'all came up here, and I know it's, uh, it's a struggle sometimes because you've got to get up in front of everybody. So, I just want to give y'all something. A little bit here to remind Give them a big round of applause this morning. As they go back to their seats, our choir will be coming to minister to us in song.
Testament is still the same God we serve today who did impossible things and who does impossible things in our lives and in our world today. And that's who we serve. Our scripture reading this morning is Colossians 1, verses 9 through 14. Colossians 1, verses 9 through 14. The Word of God says this, And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in life. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. May God bless the reading of His Word as we meditate upon it. chapter 1 once again, continuing to look at the series, Living Under Pressure. I want to talk about the powerful will of God, the empowering will of God in our lives. Colossians 1 verses 9 through 14 is where we're at this morning if you want to follow along in your scriptures. I'll apologize in advance. The um, sermon notes I forgot to delete. Part of the words that are in the blanks, so y'all can get a head start on filling those in because um, it's kind of messed up there. In 2016, there was a movie that came out called Hacksaw Ridge. Some of y'all might have seen it, said in World War II. Caution for anybody that might look it up. It is rated R and very much deserves that rating as it is a war movie and there's a lot of things depicted in it. It's based on the true story of a gentleman by the name of Desmond Thomas Doss. Doss was a United States Army corporal who served as a combat medic in World War II. Um, he was with an infantry company in World War II, and um, what was unique about Doss was that he wanted to be a combat medic, but he was a conscientious objector, and he refused to carry a weapon into battle. He wanted to be a combat medic, but he did not want to have to touch a weapon. And he had some struggles, but he finally got permission to do this, and he would he ended up on the island of Okinawa, where the Battle of Okinawa took place. And um, in military history, those of you that, that study that kind of thing and know about these things, this is one of the bloodiest, if not the bloodiest, battle in the history of World War II. It's one of the hardest fought battles of the war. The war was actually referred to as the Typhoon of Steel because of the ferocity of fighting amongst the Japanese and the Allied forces that were there. Um, so many Allied ships and armored vehicles and everything were, were all over the islands. The battle was the bloodiest in the Pacific with approximately 160 thousand military dead on 
both sides. But during the Battle of Okinawa, Desmond Doss found himself on the battlefield with many injured soldiers all around him. And in the course of 12 hours, his enemy soldiers were around him as he had no weapon. He saved between 50 and 100 wounded infantrymen atop an area known by the 60, uh, 96th Division as Hacksaw Ridge. He was on the battlefield for 12 hours just dragging and carrying and bringing wounded soldiers and getting them to safety over and over and over again throughout that time. And in an interview talking about what he did, in his own words, he says, I was praying the whole time. I just kept praying, Lord, please help me get one more. Lord, please help me get one more. Doss had a purpose. He knew what God's will was for him in, in that time. He knew what his purpose was on that battlefield. So even though he had bullets that were flying around him, even though there were enemy soldiers around, even though he was putting his own life at risk, he said, Lord, I want to get one more. And he kept going and going and going. The pressure was to run, but his purpose said stay. For his actions, he received the Congressional Medal of Honor. The only conscientious objector to receive that honor. He had a purpose, he had a passion, and he had a desire to save lives. And it was that purpose that empowered him to do that. It's what drove him in his life. Let me say this. Purpose brings power, passion, and perseverance. Purpose brings power, passion, and perseverance. If we know what our purpose is in this life, if we know our, our, our purpose that has been given by God, circumstances, difficulties, the pressures of this life will not matter nearly as much. Why? Because we know what we ought to be doing and we just want to get it done. We know why we are set here on this earth and what do we want to do? We want to run after it. When there's pressure all around, if I have a purpose, I've got a mission, and I know what it's going to do, what it's going to be. For the Christian, it's called knowing the will of God. And I don't know why we kind of drifted away from that. I remember when I was in my teenage years, that was basically all that we talked about. What's the will of God for my life? And you know what? One of the things that I, I remember doing a great deal is praying, Lord, what in the world am I here for? What is your will for my life? What is it in my life that I need to be doing. And you know, it was from that that I kept searching, kept searching, and I finally heard, heard God's voice saying, all right, look, I want you to be a preacher. And I'm like, okay. And it utterly and completely changed my life. It's interesting here. Paul is communicating to the Colossians. The Colossians are under pressure. Compromise your faith, contradict the Bible, and call sin virtuous. Go ahead and and disregard Christ. The very beginning of it, Paul encourages the individuals and he reminds them that they are a part of a family. That they have brothers and sisters in Christ, that they are bought with a price, they are part of God's family, therefore they've got a purpose, they've got a meaning, they've got a direction to go in. And then he immediately goes in and he begins to talk about the will of God. Because the will of God is essential to living under pressure. When we know it, when we have purpose, when we have direction, when we have something to cling to, it allows us to have the power that we need. The big question is, how do we get there? How do we know it? How do we grab hold of the will of God? How do we have it in our lives? How do we sustain it? That's what I'd like to talk about today. Four actions we can take to obtain 
and sustain the will of God in our lives. Four things you and I can do, and uh, four things you and I can tell other people. Hey, listen, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to seek out the will of God. Let me give you some actions that you can do that will help obtain and sustain the will of God in your life. The first one is this. We can accept that the will of God can be known. We can accept that the will of God can be known. Verse 9, And so from the day we have heard, we, we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Paul saying this, I heard about you. I heard about your struggles. I heard about the difficulties y'all are going through. I heard about all of these things that were going on in your life. And you know what I'm going to be praying? I'm going to pray that you know the will of God. See, Paul knew what was important. And catch this, he knew the will of God could be known. He knew that the will of God could be something that he grabbed hold of, that individuals could know and do. Friends, listen. Never think that the will of God is some far off thing that you can't grab a hold of that will take you 30 years sitting into a cave trying to figure out. It is something that God gives us and that we absolutely can know. Let me give you two, um, two things about the will of God. First, the will of God is communicated directly. It's communicated directly, filled with the knowledge of His will. You know how many Bible verses mention the will of God? Not just what I, I read for children's sermon. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 4.3 It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality. Luke 9.23 Then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny himself, take up their cross daily, and follow me. 1 Peter 2, verse 15, For it is God's will that by doing so you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. The Bible is full of things that tell us God's will. Plain, simple, straightforward. Things that we should be doing. Friends, listen. When we accept the Word of God, when we accept those commands, and we understand who we are, and we understand what God's will is, and we do them, there's a power that comes with that. There's an encouragement that comes with that. Think about our Operation Christmas Child. We're putting together shoeboxes. As we're putting together shoeboxes, what do we know? We know what we ought to put in there because it's written down. We know what we're doing. We're creating a, a Christmas present for somebody that probably has never received a Christmas present. We're going to do something that the gospel is going to go out and touch the hearts and lives of children all over the world. And you know what that does? That empowers us. That makes us all the more excited to do it, saying, you know what, I don't care what the cost is. I want to get this thing done. I don't care if I've got to go out and, out and make another trip to Walmart or, or wherever to go get more stuff. I want to get this done. Why? Because you know the purpose behind it. Friends, listen, if we know the will of God, there's an empowerment that comes with this. But notice also this, the will of God comes through discernment. In all spiritual wisdom and understanding, what's Paul talking about? He's saying, listen, I also want y'all to know not only what the will of God is that it's blatantly given to you, but that you would have some discernment in your life that you might know what it is when you have those difficult times that come. Because there are difficult times that come. You need some discernment. Reminds me of the Sunday school teacher teaching her class uh, about the Ten Commandments. All these kids in there, they get done talking about all the Ten Commandments. So she quizzes the kids, saying, Kids, what is the commandment that talks about your parents? And they all come back and say, Oh, honor your father and your mother. And they're like, Exactly right. Is there any commandment that talks about brothers and sisters? And one person said, Yes, absolutely. Thou shalt not kill. <laughs> We need discernment. Because there are some times. You got two great job offers. One's in Virginia, one's in Georgia. 
Lord, which one do I take? You need discernment. You need prayer, searching the scriptures, searching out individuals that are, are knowledgeable and good in their understanding. There are circumstances and situations that are clearly handled in God's word with a command. And Paul says you need wisdom and discernment. You know something that I found, though, is this. You know, a lot of times when we're trying to search out God's will, one of the things is if we're doing all that we're supposed to, it helps out so much. For example, you, you ever put a puzzle together? You open the box up, maybe a thousand pieces or five hundred pieces, and you're looking and you're you're sorting, you're getting the eight pieces, and you look in there, and there's a piece you're just like, ain't no way this is in the right puzzle box. Like I know what this is a picture of, and that can't be part of it. And you kind of put it off to the side. And you start doing the puzzle, and you put the outside in, you start getting all these colors, you get the trees, you might get the, the water, you get all of this other stuff in, and you keep looking at that piece and going, no, I'm sorry, that fell out of some other box. That goes into, you know, that goes into some other thousand-piece puzzle. And you keep going, and you keep going, and once everything, almost everything is all done, you look in on that piece and go, oh, I know exactly where that goes. So often within our life, if we are following just the distinct will of God that's been given to us, given to us directly, in living and loving Jesus as we should, in following after Him, in loving others, forgiving others, in just doing the simple things that God has called us to do, what do we find? That weird piece, that one thing we need some discernment on, God is very, very clear about. It's essential that we understand that we know that God's will can be known. But notice also this, something else we can do. We can acknowledge your purpose in doing the will of God. You can acknowledge your purpose in doing the will of God. So as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him. You ever watch gymnastics? My mother loved watching gymnastics, the Olympics, and you see, uh, you see the teams, they're going up, and they're doing all of these flips and turns and somersaults, and you're like, I can't do that. Um, you see them on a floor exercise, you'll have this girl that'll be running and go and flip and get up in the air and go and do all of these things and land, and right after they land, what do they do? They do that little arm to them, right? We see that a lot in the Olympics. We don't see that a lot in everyday life. And we don't want to. If you go to take your car to get its oil change, and the mechanic's in there, and he goes and takes that oil filter, and gets the old one off, puts the new one on, and he goes up and goes, oh, there we go. <laughs> you go to Starbucks and order a vanilla latte. The barista goes in and does all that and goes, there it is. <laughs> you probably won't go back to those places. There's reason why I do it, right? They're there and they know they're getting a lot of spectators. They're entertaining the spectators. They know that. But they're not really there for that. They're there for the judge. And that's why they are doing that little flare at the end. The Christian life is exactly the same. We're in this world doing so many things, and we want to touch hearts and lives, and we want to see other people come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, but we've got to understand something. We've got a purpose, and it's not here. It's up there, and it's to give glory to God on high. God's purpose might be we interact in this world, and we might be touching the hearts and lives of other individuals, which we should, but ultimately, our purpose is heavenward, not earthbound. It's essential to doing the will of God and understand why we are here. And there's two things in the scriptures. First, your purpose is to bring glory to Jesus. In a manner worthy of the Lord. Catch this. A lot of times we look at this verse and we, we look down and go, oh, I'll never be worthy. And you know what? We are never, ever, ever truly going to be worthy of Jesus Christ. 
Because we are sinful, we are fallen, we are individuals that have messed up a hundred billion times. But you know what this verse is talking about? This verse is talking about being a reflection of the one who saved us. To walk worthy is simply saying, you know what, I want to walk in a manner that shows Jesus Christ off the most I possibly can. Friends, let me uh, ask if you um, caught a, a rare disease. Let's say you caught a rare disease and it made it so you couldn't move your arms, couldn't move your legs. You were paralyzed from the neck down. You talk, but you couldn't move your arms or your legs. And you were like that for eight months. Everybody that ever saw you in here in those eight months knew you were in a wheelchair. Knew you were in just basically something that someone had to bring you around. You couldn't move your arms, couldn't move your legs, couldn't do anything at all. You could move your head, move up, down, left, talk to somebody. But that was it. And people knew it. But then lo and behold, a scientist develops a medication that 100% cures you. And you take it, you move your arms, you move your legs again, and you work and you get your strength back. Let me ask, how much time would you spend back in that wheelchair? You'd go out and burn that thing, wouldn't you? Yet how often in our own lives, we as Christians were dead in our trespasses and sin, and Christ made us alive again. How often does this world see us being dead in our trespasses and sin once again? How often do they see us not bringing glory to Jesus, the one who made us alive? We're called for that purpose to bring glory to God. Not only that, your purpose is to bring gladness to Jesus, fully pleasing to Him. You ever seen a teenage boy get his first crush, first girlfriend? He changes, doesn't he? You know, might have been that showering was kind of a weekly thing, and that's like twice a day. You know, the comb in their room was in pristine order because it was never used. But now it's getting all that use. You see him in clothes that he's never worn, puts on enough cologne to kill half the population of Hillsboro. <laughs> Why is he doing that? He's got somebody he wants to please. He's got somebody that he wants to make happy. Doesn't care what everybody else says. Doesn't matter if everybody else is coughing. <laughs> Friends, why don't we do that with Jesus? To live life to make him happy. We have pressures that say, you know what? Live this way. <coughs> Abandon your faith. The way in which we overcome those pressures said, so listen, I'm here and I want to make one person happy and I want to make Jesus happy. It's one of the keys to living life under pressure. Accept that you can know God's will. Acknowledge the purpose that you have. But you know what something else you can do? You can act on the will of God that you know. You can act on the will of God that you know. Verses 10 and following, very fruit in every good word and increasing in the knowledge of God being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience and joy. One of the greatest ways we can maintain and sustain the will of God in our life is simply to do it. To do what we know we ought to do. Let me give you four things. Number one, purposely serve God. Purposely serve God. Bearing fruit in every good work. When you get up tomorrow, say, Lord, I just want to serve you. If I know your command tells me to do something, I want to do it. If I get tempted and I'm going to break that, I need to back away and say, no, I'm not going to do it. Purposely serve. You know what will happen? The God of all the universe will look down and say, you know what? You are following me. I'm going to give you more guidance and more direction. I'm going to be watching out over you. Why? Because you're following me, and I can use an individual that is following 
name. You know what else you can do? You can productively study God's Word. Productively study God's Word. Increasing the knowledge of God. Now we all study and we all learn differently. Some of us live, uh, learn visually. Some of us learn auditorily. Some of us learn by reading. Some of us learn by being shown. Friends, listen. Whatever you need to do to learn more about God's Word, to learn more about Him, do it. For me, I love listening to the radio and hearing some amazing preachers. And if you want to know, uh, know some, just, just see me. I'll give you 10, 15 of them. I'll give you so many of them. You're like, no, 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 stop. It could be YouTube and you, you watch someone. It could be reading your quarterly. But you know what? As we begin to grow in our knowledge and understanding of God, we get in power. And God begins talking to us a little bit more and more. Notice also this. Patiently secure God's strength. Patiently secure God's strength. Friends, so often in our life, we want God's strength before we do anything. We're like, God, I'm going to go out and do some rough things. Go ahead and pour that strength down on me. And God's like, no, no, no. Step out there, and I will be there, and I'll be sufficient for you. The idea of the strength and the power that God is talking about here was the Colossians that we're dealing with all of the pressures around them. Paul was saying, listen, as you're in the midst of it, as you're serving God, as you're going forth and learning more about Him, as you're doing all of the things that you ought to be doing, you're going to be strengthened. You're going to receive that blessing from God, and it's going to lift you up, and it's going to be better. And you're going to have that strength that you need to be better, to go forth and do the things you need to do. Um, <clears throat> I love cell phones. Um, many of y'all have cell phones like mine that you can do wireless charging with. Um, wireless charging is really cool because you can get this little pad and you can put your cell phone on it and it'll start charging. Unless you sneeze on it and it moves a hair of a millimeter away from that proper charging place. Then you gotta move it back. The little charging thing's great. You gotta put your phone in the right spot and get all the power you want. But if you're not in the right spot, power won't be there. Friends, so often in our own life, God is calling us to simply follow His will, simply follow after Him. And when we do, that power just comes rushing into our life. Finally, this. Persistently salute God's blessing. Giving thanks to the Father. What are we giving thanks for? For Jesus Christ. We're giving thanks for all that he has done. Many of y'all have seen the movie Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. And uh, probably one of your most hated characters, because that's the way she was written, was uh, Veruca Salt. She was the little girl that wanted everything. I want the golden egg, I want this, I want that. And you got to the point where you didn't like her, because all she wanted to do was want things. She was never happy. She was never satisfied. Why? Because all she wanted to do was want more and more and more. She was never, ever thankful. Paul reminds the Colossians, hey, be thankful for what you have and it'll change your life. Always look back at Jesus Christ because whatever pressure you have is not greater than the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Finally, this will be done. Adore the freedom we have to participate in the will of God. Adore the freedom we have to participate in the will of God. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sin. About 20 years ago, I was out visiting a, a lady in... Liberty, North Carolina. Her, uh, her name, I believe, was Ruby Henshaw. She was a widow, and we were talking about life growing up, and she told me about her dad. Her dad was a cotton farmer. And she said that after school, she'd get home, and that was what she'd have to do. She'd have to go out in the field and pick cotton. She hated it. She talked about that, and she hated every second of going out and picking cotton. She hated every aspect of it. Then she said, well, then I finally got old enough 
and I could go inside and work in the kitchen. He said, I left the field and I got inside working with my mom in the kitchen. She was grateful and thankful to be out of the field and in the kitchen. Paul is saying here, listen, don't forget where you were in a field of sin ruled by Satan. You got out of that and you're able to go to work in the blessed kitchen of God. To do His will. To seek His ways. Friends, you know what? That's an amazing thing. Each and every one of us knows Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We have the ability to work for God. We have the privilege of working for God. We have the ability to work for God. And you know what? That ought to fire us up. Don't forget two things. We'll be done. Number one, you've been rescued from darkness. The domain of darkness was when Satan had control. We have been freed from it. But not only that, you've been redeemed for a purpose. Transferred to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. In God's kingdom, we've got a purpose. We were brought here by the hand of God. You know what that ought to charge us up? To be able to do some amazing things. Let me close with this. 2023 is coming. It doesn't seem possible. It seems about like 2018 or so right now. But if 2023 is coming, I guarantee you will see advertisements for something. You will see advertisements for new diets. Plain simple. That's the time they come out. Do this new diet. Do this. It's easy. It's all of these things. It's going to be advertised. It's going to be there. I'm not a prophet or a son of a prophet. I work for a non-profit organization, but I guarantee that's what's going to happen. If you go on to WebMD, if you go on to the American Heart Association, if you go on to a lot of very reputable sites and look up the best uh, diets, you get into like the top ten list. The top ten list is like exactly the same for basically all the diets. Eat the right amount of healthy food. Exercise regularly. Drink plenty of water. That's the summary of every good diet that's out there. You don't have to buy any new books. That's what doctors will tell you. That's what nutritionists will tell you. Eat the right good foods. Exercise regularly. Drink plenty of water. And from that, results can, can come. So why is it that we have 20,000 bad diets that are out there? The all grapefruit diet, the all bubblegum diet, the all whatever diet. The reason is that the human heart has a tendency to say, you look, I know I want to do that, but boy, that looks good. I know this is, this is the right pathway, but man, this road probably will get me there too. And we do the same thing with the will of God. God, I know what you want me to do. But you know what? The pathway over there was really, really good. Why don't I do that? And then we'll probably end up in the right place. Do you know what? When we take that other path, we get smacked around by all the world has. And the pressure comes down on us. That's why God sent His Son. That we might know Him. That's why God gave us His Word. That we might know the path. But friends, this morning, the question is, which are you on today? Have you been on a pathway of your own choosing? Or have you surrendered and said, Lord, I've got to be on your path. I've got to go through. As we have this time of invitation... I'd encourage you just to search your own hearts. Say, Lord, I want to be on the right path. I want to be on your path. If you'd like, I'd love to come and pray with you. It could be today you're saying, you know what, I want to know Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I'd love to show you through the Word of God how you can know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It could be church membership. It could be baptism. It could just be a rededication of your life. Whatever that means, the altar is open.
Let's stand with our heads bowed. Father, as we come before you right now, I pray that your hand would be on us. Lord, guide and direct us. Draw us close to you. May decisions be made today, whether it be by, by walking the aisle or, or just simply where, where each and every one stands. Lord, may you work on our hearts. Today we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hymn number three, or 591, half nine on Waylord, the first, the third, and the fourth verse. Would you come? <laughs>